Hey class, this is uh, Nick. I got a quick tutorial for you on layouts. Uh, before we even begin to work on um, adding an entourage and texture and tone and things like that um, in uh, Photoshop and Illustrator, it's important to get your layout uh, straight. And uh, this begins in AutoCAD. And I've got my, my file that I worked on earlier with my plans and sections and elevations. Um, and what I've done here is I've constructed a layout um, that is, is basically, it, it helps the reviewers uh, and, and, and anybody looking at your drawings understand how the orthographics are projected um, off of each other. And um, not all of your layouts have to look like this, but you do want to think about um, the, the, the ideas um, that I am sort of talking about here. So, for example, the, the plan is um, at the top of the page. This is a single story building, so I only, I only have the one plan. Um, this would change if I had multiple, uh, uh, you know, like stories. But but for our project right now, um, this makes a lot of sense. So this is going to anchor the the top left of the page, which is where most people start to look at a drawing. Um, projected off of that, uh, in in this case, uh, is a section, and it's actually the section if you notice that's projected off of this this line right here, um, and it's projected straight down, and then projected off of that is the elevation that you'd be looking at here. So these three drawings like align with each other, um, both in terms of the, the kind of concept and also graphically, right? If you can see my, my construction lines that I've used on the non-plot layer um, in order to get this to work. Um, the other thing that I did was I had the other section, uh, which is cut here. I moved it over to, to here. The, notice that the ground line is actually like continuous. I mean, it's the same. It's the same ground line. These are aligned, but then I broke it, right? Because these two things are not on the same uh, plane, right? And if we had this line being uh, like continuous, actually like running across without a break in it, it would look like these, there were two buildings, maybe. I mean, we want to have two sections. Um, the, the elevation. What I've done is I've actually I've actually basically taken the same kind of spacing of this line and projected it down without the break because I want to show that it's on the ground and I'm going to be putting in some entourage later, like some some trees and some people and things that are going to kind of establish a context for this building um, and a scale for it. Um, and it just makes the layout really. Um, really nicely balanced, has some nice kind of white space in it. What I've done very, very carefully is I've, using my, my non-plot layer, I've taken the dimensions of the building, which as we know is roughly 20 by 20. I offset a line by about 10 feet, um, which gives me kind of a nice proportion of the building. Um, and then um, I, I place my building on it. And then I, I offset that another and I place this, this building here. Um, I did not. Uh, I, I I did offset this uh, five feet, but I trimmed it like a foot, foot and a half, in order to produce this gap. And then I copied that same offset over to the other side. So I'm using the same dimensions. Like I'm, I'm basing it on this kind of modular uh, system. What I've essentially created is a grid for laying it out. And again, I'm using the non-plot layer, the cyan layer, uh, in order to do that because then it won't plot. But of course, I can always turn it off. Um, and it won't really like bother anybody um, anyway. But again, the principle here is to say that it's very easy to tell that the drawing is projected you know, off of this. These are sections because they have a ground line, because they have stuff that has been cut. Uh, and this is, is also a uh, section. Later on, we'll label them. We'll say section uh, A, section B. We do that in Illustrator or Photoshop. I wouldn't do it in uh, AutoCAD. Um, and then the elevation is very clear because it has a ground line and nothing is cut. Um, in this case, I did use a purple for the roof, but because I wanted that to kind of pull out. It will be obvious once we add the pochet and things back in. Um, I don't, in most kind of cases, you would label drawings uh, for like a client or something like that. But I feel like it's really important to not rely upon labels and to make sure that the drawings are understood as planned sections and elevations um, at this point. Um, I'm not putting in a north arrow. I'm not putting in a scale uh, yet because, again, I want those to be kind of intuitive to us. I want them to rely upon the drawings. Um, so anyway, uh, if I've got you know this kind of sheet laid out, what I need to do is plot it. And you'll notice uh, pretty quickly that this will not fit on 11 by 17 uh, at a quarter inch scale, which is the scale that we ask you to plot at. So um, how do you how do you change that? Well, we we'll go ahead and go into the um, uh, layouts and in fact, I mean, if you if you don't uh, have that in um, uh, in Windows, I think you can go layout. Oops, I spell it right. And you can say layout new, 
layout name and you can just choose the default name by spare pressing enter. Okay, and then if I go in, I can go into layout, let's say layout two that I've got. Now the layout will start off with a default uh, paper size and, and, and like those sorts of things. If you, um, if you right click, you should be able to go into edit page setup. And what I'm going to do is actually, I actually want to plot it at um, using the 24 by 36 uh, plotter, and I can plot it as a as a strip. Um, so I'm actually going to go ahead and um, set up my own kind of custom uh, plot size for this one. Uh, let's see here. So I'm plot layout. Make sure I get my plot style table correct. Um, and then for paper size, I want to say manage custom sizes. Um, and then you can you can add one, say new paper size. Um, and then in this case, I might say the width of that. So if it's if it's going to be a 24 by 36, um, you guys print by the inch. So you're going to be printing the height of it will be because um, it's 30 it's 36 inches uh, across. And then we'll make the width. And I'm kind of going to estimate here, but I'm probably going to say let's go ahead and make it um, 18 inches for now. Well, yeah, let's do 18 inches, so about half that. The idea is that you pay by the inch, as, as I understand, and then um, um, we want to minimize the number of inches that we have to print. It's going to cost you more for that. Um, so we would we print to this, and then we trim off the excess. Okay, let's just press OK. The paper size is this, this one that I made up, and actually, let me go ahead and change the name of it, because um, I'll just call it 18 by 36. You can make this whatever you need it to be, uh, but I'm trying not to waste as much as much paper as I can. Okay, so 18 by 36. It is going to be a vertical layout again because we're going to trim off the top. And don't worry about the printer for now because we'll make it a PDF. So everything looks to be fine. And then that's that's actually what you get. So this is um, 18 inches, this is 36 inches, uh, and you'll notice that our thing is quite. Um, Small now. This is our this is our layout viewport. So in this in this mode, I can uh, use the non-plot um, uh, layer, and I can draw in the layout in in like paper space. So this is actually 18 inches by 36 inches. Okay, um, and so if I wanted to to do something, um, I could I could draw a rectangle at zero zero, which is actually the bottom of the layout, and um, and I can and I can make it. Um, and if I and if I if I make it to the edge of this, now I've got the dimensions of it, and I can begin to use that to lay out my drawing if I want to. So I can I can take this window, <clears throat> I can move it, and I can snap it to here, and then I can click and drag it to get it to um, snap to various things. If I wanted to go halfway here, so that just allows me to do that. And in fact, I'm going to take the window itself and I'm going to move it on to the non-plot layer and that will ensure that um, the edge of that window doesn't plot and we don't want that okay so now I'm gonna double click to get into my layout and kind of pan uh, kind of kind of pan around a little bit uh, center it and I'm gonna double click to get out and then I'm gonna change the scale so the scale needs to be a quarter inch because that's what we were asked to print and you can see that that fits that's pretty tight in um, in that box already. So um, we're gonna need to make some adjustments here. So we can go ahead and move this up a little bit. So I just I just move the window up a little bit, and I'm gonna double click here. So ooh man, really really close. Okay. So that'll probably that'll probably do for us. And you would probably want to go ahead and trim trim that for your review. Uh, but let's go ahead and make it as, as even as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and explode that. And I'm going to draw kind of a guideline. And I'm just going to cl click it and stretch it. So copy. So I'm keeping a line here at the base of this. And I probably want to float it. So it's pretty, it's pretty tight here. So actually what I'm going to do is probably... I want to probably measure something that is probably twice this distance in in a space. So this is kind of my center line here. 
Oops. Uh, I made the mistake of zooming when I was in the viewport. I don't want to do that. That'll change my scale. I just I just did an undo there to get back. Okay, and I'm doing a delete these lines so I can select my box again. Okay, so that yep, still quarter scale. Okay, so I think what I want to do is I since this I know this is a center line, I want to center it on the page here that I that I created. So I know that this is um. Actually, no, I don't. That's not a true center. Um, okay, the, the only I've got this one which I used, so which is the center of the layout, and if I project this down, I should be able to um, see that. So this is my line, and I want to be sure to move. this line over to here okay so very very so it allows you so I can when I'm when I'm moving some things so I'm I, I have this line here I can select the entire box that has my drawing in it and I can actually move it uh, to that line okay so if you look at um, let's 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 do that again here so okay so I've got the line that I drew from the center all the way down. I select my um, layout box. You can see it's this whole thing here. And I can say move. And I'm choosing this line, which is inside of the drawing in the layout box. And I'm going to move it so that it aligns with this line that I drew, which is inside of the uh, paper space. Okay, So I haven't touched actually any of the lines in this because that would change the scale right and that would mess up my drawing what I've done is I've actually just just referenced the line inside of that layout um, and that'll actually um, make sure that it's uh, centered properly okay so the other yep okay and don't don't worry about this box like being kind of off center or, or whatever the, the drawings on the inside are actually on center so that's right um, the other thing that I want to do is um, just in this in this view is kind of measure. I'm gonna draw a line at the bottom of the screen here, and I'm gonna measure. I'm gonna do an offset. I want to measure the distance between this and this, and I want to use it to offset that line. So it's here now, and then just like I did before, I'm well. I'm going to take the whole layout at once. It gets a little confusing because the lines are all blue now. But I take the whole layout, which is you can see the four kind of corners here. And I'm going to move it, and I'm going to use the ground line here and move it up to this non-plot line here. Okay. And what I've done with that is I've now, I have the same spacing here as I do from the edge of the printable uh, page. And that just gives it a nice kind of balance. It's recalling like this distance here. So it's a nice kind of module. Okay. Um, and that should look, that should look really nice when it's, when it's printed, it's really balanced. And then, um, you know, if you wanted to, if you wanted to give yourself a trim line, you could just go into your red here and I might just kind of draw well actually let's um let's do the same thing here so uh, if I take my non-plot line again and I'm just gonna draw a line here I'll move it to here and I still have the offset from before which is three inches, as a matter of fact, which is nice. And um, I, I'll take a red line. And the red line exists in the drawing. It exists in the what we're going to print, but it's not. It's not in our CAD drawing. It's in the. Uh, it's in the print. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and shrink our viewport. 
So what's going to happen is this is going to plot, and then this red line is going to give you a clue as to where to cut the page so that it's balanced, right? We have the same distance here as we do here. It's just a really nicely balanced page. It's balanced on the sides. So this is going to be like, like an 18, might even be an 18 by 24, which might be a really, really useful light dimension. But that is a, a layout that is ready to be printed uh, for, your, for your final review. Um, and it'll be really balanced, it'll be the right scale, um, so it'll be really nice. But we're going to use it to actually start to fill out um, some information uh, graphically. But this is a nice kind of way to think about plotting a layout um, that the drawings are easy to read, they project off each other, um, it's a custom scale, um, so this is a really good strategy for you to use um, for any kind of any kind of final review, anything you need to plot out that's not going to fit on 11 by 17. Um, Okay, so uh, if you have any questions, uh, talk to me, talk to your TA. Uh, hope this is helpful. Thanks.